Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'd like to display a couple of other uh, use cases that we're working on at the moment. But first of all, uh, where do I come from? What am I doing? As most of you might know, I'm Irish, but I've uh, lived half of my life in German. So technically, that probably makes me half German. So if I start talking about workflows or validation during the presentation, then they'd understand why. Um, I've been building travel technology for the last 30 years in Germany and uh, been through all the generations of travel technology uh, uh, and there's been quite a few. Um, back in April 15, 2010, I was invited by the, uh, the DRV, the German Travel Industry Association, to talk about an idea, a vision that we were, that we had at the time, global monitoring. And I was presenting this vision to the DRV management board. And what we wanted to do was to standardize or normalize how, how crises are recognized, how crises are graded, and how we communicate crises to the leisure industry. Um, just as I was mid-presentation, um, probably about maybe three quarters of the way through, uh, this happened. Uh, this happened. And uh, that's basically uh, where it all began. Um, the then, or uh, uh, a gentleman called Torsten Schaefer, the public relations officer of the DRV, entered the, the conference room and to everybody's surprise, he said, uh, for some reason, they've just closed the Northern Atlantic airspace because of a dust cloud. And uh, everybody was baffled. And um, it's not an understatement when I'm saying, you know, I'm at the, with the right product in the right place at the, exactly, at the exact right time. My eyes slowly drifted to heaven and uh, after a Catholic upbringing, I said, thank you God, you know, because really it, there is no better place to be at that particular time if you're trying to promote a crisis management system. Getting back to the presentation, all of my attendees had their iPhones on, their concentration level had plummeted and my presentation was over. But anyway, after that presentation, we managed to secure uh, TUI as our, our, our launching partner and we went on to build global monitoring. About a year and a half later, we got the, the stamp of approval from the industry in Germany as a standard system and uh, our, our got the, the industry's blessing, for want of a better word. Today, um, when we look at what we do, we haven't just got global monitoring, we've got a, a suite of, of solutions. Global monitoring was the flagship back in those days, and that flagship position, or the flagship position has been exchanged or swapped around, <coughs> excuse me, by a destination manager. We'll talk about that in, in a second. But um, we build country information systems. We do travel tracking. Travel tracking is very important, especially if you're in business travel. We alert uh, travelers uh, wherever they are in the world and we send them crisis information. We even dare to do pri crisis prediction. We can't tell you exactly when the next great white is going to attack somebody on Bondi Beach, but we can tell you what, he did what, what, what happened last year or over the past 10 years. So using that data pattern, you may be not be able to predict, but you have a good idea of what might happen. The same applies to forest fires in California or a um, uh, flooding in Bangkok. So we have very, very rich data upon which people can, I won't say dare to predict, but have a good knowledge when they're planning future, when they're planning future journeys. Uh, we are entering to other areas of business at the moment, uh, into logistics, uh, business continuity. Who do we serve? We serve as we did back in there, or as I predicted, or as I uh, visualized back in 2010, um, the, uh, the, the leisure industry. But very, very soon we realized, you know, if you're um, traveling and you have a, a towel under one arm, a bottle of suntan lotion in, the, in, in your hand, and you're wearing Bermuda shorts, the crisis is the same, it doesn't matter. If you're wearing a three-piece suit and carrying a briefcase, the crisis is the same, and the effect that the crisis could potentially have on one is the same. So we decided to branch out into, the, into business travel as well. Business travel uh, adheres to a few different rules than, uh, than leisure travel. The subtle difference is uh, business travel uh, uh, is driven by a duty of care. So if you're an employee and you send people abroad, you're bound by the duty of care. If something happens and then the employees are properly informed, it can be legally very, very serious. Uh, we sell technology to travel retailers. The, the typical 
bricks and mortars as well as OTAs. Uh, individual travelers, we have our, 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 um, uh, our app that individual travelers can use. And as I said, we, uh, we, we, we sell to or we, we serve related industries. When we're looking into the future, obviously we want to address the needs of smaller businesses. We want to address the needs of special interests. We want to talk to the, uh, the tour guide in, uh, in Austria, in Vienna. We want to talk to people uh, who are running surf schools in, in California. And we can do that using the blockchain. We want to talk to just-in-time travelers. We want to talk to do-it-yourself travelers. And we can do that with use of the blockchain. This is just a, a, a few of the customers that we serve today. Uh, what's interesting about this particular slide, it's got a very, very healthy mix of corporates, of big, medium-sized tour operators, of travel retailers, bricks and mortars, as I said, as well as OTAs, and other service providers to the industry. When we're talking about destination information, we've decided to divide it up into three areas. And this is pre or in the, when you're in the planning phase or actually when you're at destination. But the three different areas are information that you, you could know, information that you should know, and information that you must know. And if you just look at that closer, what's the information you should know? If you're going to Ireland on holidays, where I'm from, or if you're going to Asia, you know, the do's and don'ts of the respective countries could be a little bit different. If you're a member of a marginalized group, am I allowed to hold my girlfriend's hand on the street? Am I allowed to hold my boyfriend's hand in the street? That's information that's handy to know before I go to a destination. We inform uh, uh, customers about um, entry requirements, uh, information you should know. We inform uh, customers about deviation from rules and regulations, especially when it comes to COVID. Uh, we inform uh, customers about public service strikes that are planned or being planned. If we're planning to go to England, it's handy to know if there's going to be a train strike. Then you can decide to rent a car or not rent a car. When we look at the globe or how we have the, the incidents that we've recorded over the last 10 years, we've recorded altogether 305,464. This was the number uh, last Friday morning when I was finalizing the, uh, the, the presentation. Looking at, you know, who do we serve? We start with avalanches, we go all the way through to a zombie attack in New York. Okay, I don't believe in zombies either, but we span quite a few uh, of, of incidents. And all of that information today is present on Camino. As soon as a new incident occurs, it's uploaded onto Camino. This is an incident that we, uh, that we uploaded uh, last, last Friday morning. And uh, you can have a closer look. You can see exactly where this particular shooting incident occurred. And uh, so if you're actually going to Washington, or if you're in Washington, or if you're planning to go to Washington, we will give you that information. We will automatically put that information on your mobile. If you're planning to go to Cornwall in New Zealand, it's handy to know that there was a chemical spill there last week. If you're planning to go on a pride march or a pride parade in, um, in Norway, sorry, you're too late, it's already happened. And if you're going to Bolivia, you better be careful because there are violent demonstrations there. So that's just to show you a little bit of the versatility and the depth of the information that, that, we, that we offer. How do we ac accumulate all that data today? We have three different methods today. I call them traditional, technical, and manual. Traditional, we work with governments, we work with local governments, we work with foreign ministries. We work with um, news agencies, we work with universities, we work with scientific institutes. Uh, technical, we work with, uh, we have web crawling, we have social media crawling, we have artificial intelligence, off-the-shelf products and products that we develop ourselves, and manual. So if we have an incident, we have a crisis that's, we'll say, greater than level five, then we manage that manually. It goes without saying. But when we're looking into the future, how can we complement our existing sources with information that we can, that we can, we can, we can procure on, on, on the network? So we're looking into the future, and we're going to say, we're going to recognize other potential suppliers or sources of information on the network, and I'll talk about that in a, a little later. And uh, if we find information that's valuable to us, then obviously we will reward the people accordingly. Chain for Travel and uh, blockchain entered into my life about maybe 
10, 10 months ago, a little more than, than 10 months ago. And uh, I introduced it to my management team, and uh, it reminded me an awful lot. It was reminiscent of the uh, back in the corona days. You have the believers and the, the non believers, the yeas and the nays. It don't work, it's far, vastly over exaggerated. Uh, but after I replaced all those people, then we uh, decided on a. On a uh, I didn't really, I, I convinced them or convinced them, sorry. But anyway, um, we decided on, a, an, on fun, five bullet points that were important to us. What's important about the blockchain? We want an easy licensing um, model that we can connect um, 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 customers all over the world. We want to have an efficient payment and an efficient, uh, efficient settlement policy. We don't want to be sending some small company in New Zealand a reminder and threatening to switch them off if they don't pay. We want to have a simple onboarding. Uh, uh, process for new customers, scalability obviously, and uh, network effect. But we want to rub shoulders with like-minded people. We want to collaborate with other people on the network and learn from others and maybe adapt that, that, that what we learn into our own into our own processes. So, and uh, to do that, we have decided to develop two apps. And as I'm here today, these apps are being developed. Uh, on the left. Um, the A3 app, uh, aware, advise, and uh, uh, an all clear alert. Um, I've often just, uh, out of um, our experience over the last years, a lot of customers say the all clear alert following an incident is often more important than the, than the initial alert. But it's a D app on, on the community network. And what's unique about this D app, the customer basically tells the app what to do. The customer configures the app according to their own requirements. So if the, cu the customer says what I want, where I want it, and when I want it. So if I'm a future customer and I have a surf school, for example, um, in California, I want to know about earthquakes. I want to know about shark attacks. I want to know about forest fires. I don't want to know anything else. And I only want to know about those three items if they're over level three. Anything else I'm not interested in. I don't want to know about traffic jams in Istanbul unless I plan to go there. And of course, then it's going to be of interest. So when we detect an incident, that, that matches those requirements, and we will forward that message to the customer's wallet, and then the customer will accept the information, and, uh, and payment, payment will occur. We have a B2B and a paper push model. On the right-hand side, uh, H20 is uh, an app uh, under development, as I said, specifically for the accommodation industry, for the hotel industry for bed and breakfasts, for the large international chains, uh, for the shared economy, and for everything else in between. What's important for the hotel is obviously the could, ha could haves, the should haves, and the must haves. So that it's going to be part of that, of that, of that proposition. Uh, all the hotel needs to do is when they're registering is to enter their uh, geo position. And automatically, we generate a circle around that hotel with a radius of 20k, so a circumference of 20 kilometers. So everything within that circle of 20 kilometers, every incident that occurs, will automatically uh, be pushed or the hotels uh, will be notified about that. So it's a B2B uh, uh, model as such, but, and it, but it's a, a subscription-based model, and I'll talk about that more in a second. But what's interesting about the H20 model is we have uh, not only a B2B, but we have a B2C component as well. Um, this is what it looks like from the bird's view. Um, you know, both applications look the same, but they're very, very different. I hope that makes sense. But, um, but what we have is basically we have H3M on Camino, uh, as of last Friday, three, uh, 300,000 or 306,000 incidents. We have the smart contracts managing all of the communication between Camino, H3M on Camino, and our respective customers. When our respective customers decide or accept the information, we get paid uh, via Camino. The, two, the difference is we have a content, logical, a content logic driving the system. So basically, if you're at a surf school and you only want particular content, that's the content logic driving the system. If you're a uh, hotel, then you'll only get the, the information within the 20K. So you have your surf school, your bed and breakfast, shared economy, hotel chain, so on and so forth. What were um, this next slide? Okay, this is not 
rocket science, not at all, but I think it's, it's actually it's very neat and it's a lovely value add or a, lo a lovely add-on. We're not just supplying the information to the hotel, but we're enabling the hotel to give that information to their guests. Uh, and so the guests, basically, for the duration of their stay, they have access to the basically current, valid situation within 20 kilometers of their hotel. Um, we're starting at a negligible price of 10 euros a month. So we're targeting this at very, very small um, 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 hotels. But for that 10 euros, the hotel will get 20 QR code credits. I know that's a terrible word. But that means that that bed and breakfast can give our information to 20 guests. And that, in, that, that, that 20 guests will have access, access to that information, will automatically get updates to the information for duration of their stay. Of course, if I'm a bigger um, a b and or if I'm a hotel or a hotel chain, I can buy bigger packages, sign up for uh, a, a higher subscription, and automatically uh, get, get um, um, more, more uh, uh, QR code credits. The, host, the hotel can decide to sell that and generate a new revenue, a revenue stream, the hotel can decide to just give that to the customer as part of a loyalty program, or the hotel can say, ah, come on, it's an extra service, I'll give it to you free of charge. The guests can access that while checking in via QR code, or on the hotel URL site, or on the booking uh, documentation. As I mentioned earlier on, we're hoping to procure data from the network. We are going to build a kind of a browser on the network where we will access or analyze wallets and check if these wallets have content which is, inter is interesting for us. Um, if we're talking about the Bronx or if we're talking about a village in Mexico or if we're talking about some other destination which normally would not really be on our radar screen, but we have local content or local suppliers of content with special events, local intelligence, publications, times and dates, uh, regional news, we can procure that content, and we will procure that content because it's a value add to us. What we're obviously careful of is we need to analyze, evaluate, and validate that information. But as soon as we get information that we can make use of, we will um, um, reward the, uh, the source accordingly. Uh, I'm very excited about this because I just think that, you know, generate our content that we can generate um, um, on chain. Uh, can add dimensions to the way, new dimensions, uh, and very dynamic dimensions to the way we do things today. But as I say, the challenge is to, to verify and to validate. We don't want to have uh, fake news on the system. Um, looking further down the road, um, you know, adapt, improve, and foresight. I think adapt is um, is a difficult. Well, it's not a difficult. I think we've all been there. We've had, uh, we've seen new technologies appear on our doorsteps. We know the attention span of some developers, and if something new happens, they jump on it immediately. And we've done that. We think we've all have done that over the years. But when I see blockchain, I see a kind of a paradigm shift. I see that this is compared, do you have a battery-driven car, do you have a combustion engine? There's something very, very, there's something big happening around us at the moment. From the A3M point of view, we're looking forward to getting our apps out there, we're looking forward to building new apps, and we're looking forward to be very successful with, with our apps. But at the same time, we're looking at how can we adapt or utilize blockchain technology in our existing uh, uh, workspace, in our existing marketplace. When we're looking um, further down the road, it's very, very difficult, you know, uh, uh, artificial intelligence, Web 4. Uh, trust my, uh, in spite of my um, uh, ripe old age, I am um, the proud father of a 10-year-old daughter who goes to school. And, uh, and our family holidays are obviously planned around Mira's school holiday. So I'm looking forward to the day that, you know, at a New Year's Eve with bottle in hand, I can go to Alexa and say, Happy New Year, Alexa. And Alexa will say, many happy returns, Tom. But by wishing her Happy New Year, she will automatically kickstart the process and book all of the flights respective to Mary's school holidays and even remember to book the dog. And, uh, and I, I know some of us will say, well, that's possible today, but that's going to be an application that's going to be out there in the future. Foresight, when I present a product or when somebody else presents a product like that here in a few years' time, I can imagine some young fella, pimples in his face, will say, Tom, that's old school. You don't have to ask Alexa anymore. You just have to think it, and she'll do it for you. Um, so... 
Blockchain, I think, is going to be a fundamental part of our industry in the future. Ignore the innovation, suffer the consequences. Um, but I think uh, what's very important and what we all need to remember is the new kids on the block are already there. Uh, so um, I'm looking forward to collaborating with all of you guys at the uh, bar later on, and, uh, and thank you very much.